Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Coach Clayton, and this is my Women's Empowerment Interview episode. And today we have Janet as our guest, and she's going to discuss her amazing journey of overcoming obstacles in her life, personal and professionally. Hey, Janet, how are you? Good morning and mm -hmm. afternoon, wherever everybody is viewing from. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Janet, I definitely wanted to bring you on. Um, because the whole purpose of this uh, interview episode is to inspire women, you know, with so much going on and with the pandemic and all of this negativity in the media, I want it to be a source of inspiration. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me, Janet. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Love yes. the mission. Love the mission. Thank you. Thank you. So Janet, Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me a little bit about the obstacles that you overcame. And then we're going to just chat about it. Yeah. Well, let's just, obviously, I'm not 20, right? So, <laughs> uh, as 60 looms very, very close. Mm -hmm. And I embrace the age. I only, I only mention that because people are kind of like, well, who is she? Like, you know, what does she? We all have a story. That's what makes us these beautiful humans. And I will encourage people to honor your story, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It mm -hmm. all brings you to where you are today. So as a journaler, in all fairness, I've been a writer and an introspective person all my, you know, my entire life. Mm -hmm. When I look back, my story reads like a fantastic soap opera, mm -hmm. like and then, and, and you could get hung up on the negatives, yeah. but to get to here today, I just say thank you for all that I have been introduced to, all of the drama mm -hmm. that has brought me, because that, that has actually brought me to today. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, pick a story, really. I mean, really pick yeah. a story. <clears throat> okay, so, so like, yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. I want to first discuss... I know that you had uh, mentioned that you had, you experienced loss. Um, tell me a little bit about that. What, what, what exactly does loss mean to you? Okay, so here's a, so this is a great example. Thank you for pulling that out because I could go in four different directions. Mm -hmm. So I've been pregnant five times, three live deliveries, and I have two living children. So you would, you could think, wow, that's a lot. People don't, don't really talk about that. Yeah. And people, I don't, I'm not sure people actually, uh, what do you do with that information? What do you do with that experience? Well, after uh, the, 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 the baby that never came home, which dear God, may, may any woman have never experienced that. Mm -hmm. So that tragedy, thank God I had <clears throat> my son, Benjamin. And I just said to him about three weeks ago, I was like, you know, I haven't told you in a while, but I just wanted to thank you because you really did save my life. He gave reason to wake up every day. Mm -hmm. Fast forward, going through grief and all of that husband is, you know, it's everybody mourns differently yeah. and so we did not at the time we were not very good at leaning into each other I was adopted mm -hmm. and I am adopted and I was terrified that oh my gosh maybe this was a medical you know anomaly and maybe Benjamin was my miracle child so I filled out the paperwork to do a search back in the uh, early night or early to mid 90s Records opened up and there was a window. Long story short, I connect with my birth parents. Mm -hmm. a very interesting experience, but unfolded an entire family, uh, a father who ended up integrating into our lives 400%. Okay. And when I look back on that, I think, what a beautiful experience. This baby, his name was Jordan, stepped aside 
So I was able to meet these people, number one. And number two, had he not been born or had he not stepped aside, my daughter, Elisa, who is an absolute rock star, would not have been born, not by me anyway. So you could look at that entire series of quote unquote, what people would say, trauma, tragedy, whatever the in word is today mm -hmm. as exactly that. And to me, while I acknowledge Jordan's birthday every year, as we all do, he stepped aside so that wonderful, beautiful stories could unfold. So mm -hmm. how do, what do you do with those things in your world? You turn them into, you look for the gratitude of it because there's always a message from the mess. And I think I stole that from Dean Gracioso, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean, but it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, you can sit in your mess mm -hmm. or you can find the message. Ugh. And we get challenged with that in every decade uh, of our lives, every season, again, whatever, you know, I've lived long enough, I've seen so many catchphrases come yes. I don't even know what the normal catchphrase is, yeah. but it's a choice. I think it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, don't, you, know, you can choose to sit there or look out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love how you discuss your story, you discuss your loss, but that turnaround, how you show a blessing, that's important. And like you said, you do have the choice to either sit in, in, in soak in the sadness and the grief or turn it around to show yourself that there is a blessing. So absolutely, Janet. Yeah. You know what? I have redirected. I redirected. I have redecorated the rabbit hole. Yeah. So many times I have re wallpapered it. Mm -hmm. I have refurnished it. I've put new paint on the walls. Mm -hmm. And every time I do it, it's just like, I'm not going to stay here long, but I need to sit here mm -hmm. and do a little redecorating. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just step out. So, I mean, embrace your rabbit hole. Just don't yes. hang out there. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Embrace it. Feel what you need to feel because that's important as well but then yeah. you have to get out of it. Yeah, yeah I really, you, I don't think you can move, <clears throat> I should say personally, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to project. I personally can't move through until I'm in it. Yeah. Actually, a better way of saying that is I can't get past it yes. until I move through it. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that, yeah, that, that came out better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, moving on. Um, okay. So you have your loss. You, you actually have a father now that integrated with your family. I know I have, that I have two parents. He's, yeah. he is now passed. Okay. Uh, but I have two brothers. Uh, I just, I have a whole beautiful family plus mm -hmm. my existing family. And so, I mean, it's all, you know, it's, mm -hmm. The blessing to just get to say that they have met their birth parents and that it's a good thing. Okay. That's Not many. Nice. Yeah, <clears throat> that's right. That is right. Now, you also um, had indicated that you had, you were diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. How did you, let's, let's discuss, how did you um, figure out that it was an autoimmune disease and then what did you do? Um, okay. once you've had that diagnosis. I think my cat wants to meet you. Okay. Uh, so, and actually remind me, like I, I should be taking notes for myself. We're going to circle back because I now have a, here's a, here's a great way to wrap all of this up. Mm -hmm. So in my early twenties, yeah, I am engaged mm -hmm. and literally one day I can't feel my legs and I'm terrified and through a series of, and this is the uh, early 80s. So okay. now you know how old I am. Early 80s. God, really, that does sound old. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Wow. Yeah, I'm going to be 60 in two years. Anyway. That's um, a blessing, Janet. Yeah, so. I don't even care. Like, you can leave this in because this is like, this is real Janet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love looking back on that. Anyway, terrifying. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, through pokes and prods and, and you know, all of the tests that are available in modern medicine. And I'm in California and I don't have any family <clears throat> except my, the, the guy that I'm living with, who is my high school sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't walk basically. So the diagnosis is MS. Mm -hmm. And I was basically like, I don't even know what the hell that is. Multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what the hell that is. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like 20. Wow. 20 years old like I like what is this I don't I don't even I'm not old enough to know what what these diseases yeah. are and I remember and don't edit this out because this is like like most people just need permission it's just like hell no this is not like, you know, we go down the hole of like research. I don't even remember if we had internet back then. If we did, I don't think I had it. Mm -hmm. And so there's no Google. So you're just listening to what they're telling you. And I, like the, the prognosis is not great. Yeah. And I'm like, hell no. Mm -hmm. So I, I adopted this fantastic mentality of denial it was just like well that might be other people's experience but not me mm -hmm. and i i tried the support groups and all of that where people sat around woe is me woe is me mo woe is me mm -hmm. and i said hell no mm -hmm. so i was like this is not me and i do remember i will say i do remember i was lived at the top of a hill i took a walk i was like you know what damn it i'm going to teach these muscles what to do mm -hmm. muscle memory is alive and well even back then and I walked and I walked. I got myself at the bottom of a hill one day mm -hmm. and I couldn't get up. Wow. I sat on the curb and I was like, shit, girl, you're in trouble now. Mm -hmm. And so I told myself, you got to get home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's at, yeah. it's at the top of a hill. And this was like, like the hills of the Piedmonts of California. So it was like a significant hill. Yeah. I sat on the curb and said, well, how are you going to do this? One foot in front of the other. Mm. And I did. Mm. And I do not, re I'm sure it looked ugly as sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this little, little gimpy girl trying to get up the hill. But I did. Mm -hmm. And that day, it was just kind of like, I will do whatever it is in my power to not succumb to what they say is supposed to happen. I will be the exception. Mm. And can I tell you, I told you I'm almost 60. So that's almost 40 years wow. after them telling me I had, I wasn't supposed to have kids because mm -hmm. that would throw me into a spiral of an exacerbation. Mm -hmm. I ate right. I moved my body. I had a great mindset. And can I tell you, I have probably had maybe two whispers of symptom wow. in 40 years, in 40 years, two, two whispers, not wow. like throw me down. Like you can't get out of bed. Whisper. Wow. How important do you think mindset was mindset and determination was when it came to that diagnosis? <clears throat> Bundle, <laughs> that's a great question. Bundle that all up. Uh, no, let's, let's think of it differently. Let's, let's put things in the box. Mm -hmm. The mindset, yeah. which is today's rhetoric, mm -hmm. and a healthy dose of grit, yeah. sass, and denial, mm. and just say, no, that's not going to be, that, that, that's maybe what science says. But no, this is not my experience. So yeah, I mean, huge, but mm -hmm. you gotta, you have to, mm -hmm. I hate that you have to, that's such a should, that's a terrible way to say it. But for me, mm -hmm. 
again, you control your mindset. So what are you putting, what are you putting in the bowl? What are you, what are you going to project out into the universe? Mm -hmm. That's a choice again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are there days that it's kind of like, you know, oh, I wonder if, like, if I have a hard time going up the stairs now, like, well, maybe I sat too long. Maybe it's a symptom. I don't really care. I just don't think about it. It is what it is. Tomorrow's going to be a better day. 30 minutes from now, it's going to be a better day. That is so right. One thing that you, one thing that I, um, the part of the story that I really, really like is that when you said that you had to sit down and then you just had to put one foot in front of the other, and it was, you may not have looked pretty or whatever, trying to get up that hill, that relates to life period. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, you, even if you don't feel like it, you have to show up. Even if you don't feel like it, you have to put one foot in um, front of the other so that eventually that valley, valley will become a peak, but you have to put one foot in um, front of the other. I love how you um, told that story, Janet. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, because that became metaphoric. Yeah. Or like you said, like that's mm -hmm. life. And, but it's, and, but I lived it. Yeah. So when I, when I say it, it's actually a literal translation yeah. into what metaphorically became a mantra yeah. and could be an adopted mantra. I think it actually has become pretty mainstream, mm -hmm. and, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And anybody recovering from illness should remember it's one foot in front of another. That's right. That is right, Janet. Yes. So what what message would you have for someone that is going through they just got a diagnosis it could be breast cancer it could be ms like you have any type of diagnosis that like spins their puts their world into like a, a, a chaos how how do you think that they should address that in your mind in your opinion wow again that's a <clears throat> I'm going to answer it differently in that mm -hmm. there is no shoulds, right? Because it's everybody's, you know, like, it's everybody is the, one of my mentors, you know, we are all the star of our own movies. Yeah. And so everybody needs to write their own script. Mm -hmm. My script mm -hmm. would, the script that I would hand somebody, yes. and if it's like, hey, if you want to participate in this part of the movie, then it would be exactly that. Try and find the message mm -hmm. from that. So there's a part of me, I can sit here right now and say, wow, was I, was I on the hamster wheel of life back then? And, and I wasn't listening. And so the universe shot me down and said, slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, was I supposed to learn patient, patience? Mm -hmm. Because I was not a patient person at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was a perfectionist. I am a recovering perfectionist, even to this day. Mm -hmm. So like, what's the lesson from it? Yeah. Uh, there is no woe is me. The mm -hmm. other side of that from the mindset, oh, I absolutely turned all of that into, I studied nutrition like there was no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I studied health to this day. I am a functional nutritionist. Mm -hmm. I am a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely a uh, just so passionate about gut health mm -hmm. and how we support our immune system. And I've dedicated my life to that being mm -hmm. healthy mm -hmm. from a nutrition perspective, like how we fuel our bodies. So that mess turned into a commitment, mm -hmm. which I passed on to my kids, you know, it's like, and not crazy, of course, you know, they grew up with pizza. It's not like they were, you know, deprived of fun food. They're kids for crying out loud. But I will tell you, if I brought home Oreos, like once a year, I was mother of the year. <laughs> like we just didn't like sugar is yeah. it, is it it's an inflammation causing mm -hmm. substance it's it's a drug mm -hmm. they didn't get a lot of it okay. 
that was my, so I, I guess figure out in answer to your question, mm -hmm. figure out how you can wrap your head around what is happening to you. Mm -hmm. Visit your rabbit hole, yeah. stay there, stay there, honor yourself the morning of your loss mm -hmm. and then figure out what is your shield what's your armor and how are you going to show up as a warrior and fight and fight I don't give it. up just fight i love it i love norman it. cousins cured cancer with laughter mm -hmm. that's science mm -hmm. so you just and yeah so we won't go down my my bias about you know pharma and things like that because i'm a nutrition person but just don't don't give up the fight it's nice. not over till it's over. Absolutely. Janet, tell me a little bit about your career and your business. Which one? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the beauty of, of the, of, I hate the word journey, but you know, sometimes it actually is a good word. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll actually, I'll, I'll do it as the story. That's the beauty of being the, the star of your own movie because there's so many scenes. Yes. I was a teacher for over 20 years mm -hmm. and I was in HR before that for 10. So clearly I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert. I'm a functioning introvert, but oh yeah. You're I'm, an introvert. Are you an I, ambivert? Yeah. Are you ambivert. Sure? I'm an I am ambivert. too. I'm an ambivert. I'm not. I'm, yeah. Okay. You're the only other human that I know that even knows that word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I present as an extrovert, but I'm really an introvert. So. And it's, we're like we're fabulous functioning chameleons. It's great. Yes. <laughs> yes. And yeah. And for those of you who are watching, if that doesn't make any sense, look it up, and then yes. you'll be like. Oh, Oh my gosh, I think that might be that me. Might be me. <laughs> <laughs> You're so much, I love you. <laughs> Understanding the where you find your strengths. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a teacher. I like to teach. I'm an inspirer and I inspire. Those are my values when I examine who I am at the core of my being. I know that when I do those two things, mm -hmm. I am insanely happy. So mm -hmm. all throughout my career, even when I gave up teaching the mm -hmm. formal way, it was to create scenarios where I could earn money and still do those kinds of things. Okay. So, uh, and, and teach and inspire. So I became mm -hmm. a personal trainer. Okay. I, I, I do a couple of other things that uh, in real estate and I'm a property man, I'm actually a great landlord, but <laughs> most recently, and this, we circle back to the adoption story and, the, and losing a baby. You would think, I mean, if you wrote the book, if you read it here, here is a great, and I, I'm pulling this out of my, you know what, as, as we're discussing this. So for those of you who think that these things are rehearsed, they're not. <laughs> you would think five pregnancies, three births, two mm -hmm. living children would make you the most, I don't know, helicopter parent, do yes. anything and everything for your kids because you are so like, oh my gosh, I have two kids. I should just do anything and everything for mm -hmm. them. My kids will tell you I was the meanest mother ever. Mm. Interestingly, I taught them. I honored them as human beings. And I understood at a very early period in my parenting mm. that willing to do anything for my kids yes. did not mean doing everything for my kids. People. Yes. So, so again, being the parent that would, you would think that I would be willing to do anything and everything for the kids. I loved turning the dialogue around. So if either of my kids, mom, can you help me with this? Or 
I don't know how to do this. It was never, well, this is how you do it. It was, well, I'll be really interested to see how you do that, Ben. Yes. And he would look at me like, you're supposed to help me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nope, actually my job is to foster you figuring out how to do things. I'll be really interested to, for you to tell me how you figured that out. Mm-hmm. Can I like, and I'm not, I'm not like, I didn't wait until I was, they were 12, yes. like, we're, like four, yes. five, six. Mm-hmm. Um, Mom, <clears throat> can I have this if we're shopping? Can I have mm-hmm. that? Well, you know what? It says it's on sale. It's 30% off. If you can tell me how much it is, yes, I will consider it. Mm-hmm. <gasps> I was like, well, you, you've already done percentages at school. So tell me how much it is. This is, mm-hmm. and we'll talk about it. So it's so, basically making them autonomous and get providing them with critical thinking skills. Oh my gosh. Life skills to the max. Yes. I, and, and I was a teacher. So mm-hmm. I am not, do, do not misunderstand this formal education mm-hmm. it, within the four walls of the brick and mortar is I, I'm a fan. I was a part of it for 20 years, but it doesn't stop there. Mm-hmm. It is ongoing with anything and everything that we expose our kids to. Yeah. So my latest project, and this is the message. Yeah. Well, I am so passionate about this because I was in education mm-hmm. I, for 20 years. I'd send kids home and it'd be like, what happens to you over the weekend? Mm-hmm. Like I get you from Monday through Friday, you are fabulous. Yeah. And then what happens to you over the weekend? And their parents saying, I don't know what you do with this kid, but I can't get them to do this at home. Goodness, I am part of so many parenting groups on social media. Parents mm-hmm. are struggling. They really are. <laughs> so, but continue on. Continue yeah, so, on. So parents. I really believe parents, moms and dads, singly, is that a word? Uh, Or in in partnership, they're struggling. And and I'm not sure where we've, I mean, I could hypothesize, but that's another two hour lecture. Mm -hmm. What we can do to make it easier and more enjoyable, because Mm -hmm. I think parents miss the joy and in all fairness, more effective. Because we've got, and I don't mind saying this, and this is not a call out, but I guess maybe it is. I wanna be a part of the movement where we are proud of our generation of kids growing up. We've got a lot of kids that are lost and we're not, we're doing the very best we can, but I think we've lost our way. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sorry, but not every, you know, like it, not every kid gets, a trophy. Yeah. If you know you're going to get a trophy for not doing anything, where's your incentive? Mm-hmm. Where's your confidence building? How do we instill confidence in kids? By letting them try things and succeed, not by mm-hmm. doing it for them. Mm-hmm. And then we wonder why they're young adults and they don't have the confidence mm-hmm. or the or even the impetus to, to do more. Well, they're not sure they can because they don't have the confidence in themselves. Parents have not given them an opportunity to fall and get themselves up. That's what builds confidence. So I designed a program, a course, a course, really, it's just a, you know, some modules and a presentation. It's a great Ted talk actually of it's called raising independence. And that's what it's about is teaching life, 21st century life skills to kids outside of the formal classroom so that we can create self-reliant and independent children. That's Mm -hmm. our job as parents is Mm -hmm. to send them off with with love and support and strength under their wings not to go with them, but for them to do so with confidence yes. and, and be rock stars and know that they can do it. Why else? Why are we having children? Do parents ever even sit back and go, why, why do I want 
children? Do you understand the responsibility beyond the beautiful baby that's in your arms? Like that's our responsibility to foster and cultivate an independent spirit that will go out into the world and be a contributor with Mm. kindness and love and integrity and all of the things that you want and that you believe in and Mm. allow them to create their own values to be their own humans. I love that. And I, love I, that. I, 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 and that's not even practiced. Like that comes from the ebbs of my soul. Cause mm-hmm. I wasn't really even sure where we were going with this, but that if, if we don't pick up in this regard, mm-hmm. we're really missing the boat. Mm-hmm. We're going to look back and say, where did we go wrong? But I don't, but, and, and, but I'm not willing to sit and say, it's a lost cause. This generation, no, we just need to pick it up one step in front of the other, understand that we're, we're missing the mark a bit and we're not giving our kids opportunities to fail and to make decisions and to cultivate resourcefulness and tenacity. Mm-hmm. And we need to give that back to them. And it can happen right in the confines of your own home. And it doesn't matter if it's an apartment or a mansion or a motorhome or mm-hmm. a lakefront. It doesn't matter where you live. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. We just don't, we don't focus on the opportunities because it's mm-hmm. hard. We're all on the hamster wheel of trying to just survive life. Stop. We have a mm-hmm. responsibility to foster and cultivate self-reliance in our kids. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now I can say that it's not all lost when it comes to, um, at least I would say some of the millennials because they are really taking, taking grassroots initiatives and are really, yeah. really showing us, showing me, I'm a Gen Xer, what really should have been done years ago. You know what I mean with protests and all of these other things. So it's not all lost, but I do believe as parents, we definitely should be growing critical thinkers and we should, and this should start, like you said, from an early age, not when they're like getting ready to go out the door to college or wherever at 18 years old, your program is truly needed. It's truly needed. Yeah. yeah. And it, it it's, yeah, and it, it, I mean, it's a program. I liked, it. it's more of a framework and it's okay. an introduction. It's an introduction of how I should be thinking, mm-hmm. um, you know, as much as, and I could, <clears throat> I could boast about my kids, all parents could, yeah. but my, my proudest moment, two proud moments of my son, I can uh, very quickly. One was when he told me he was getting ready to leave for college and he mm-hmm. told me he felt ready and he was not afraid. Nice. What a blessing. How many parents send kids out the door and the parents are crying? Yeah. Oh my gosh, my child's leaving. It's like, oh my God, this was a beautiful thing. And for him to tell me that he felt prepared mm-hmm. and confident that he would do well was my greatest gift. Mm -hmm. honestly and truly the other one was when he was about eight maybe 10 I don't know I'm Mm -hmm. terrible at details like that Mm -hmm. and I walked by his bedroom and and he's sitting on his bed and I said what are you doing buddy he goes I'm just being wow because I told them I was like yeah like that's an important thing to learn and foster you're never bored Mm. just go, like you like go and take some time blah 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 and I don't even know where he got that language probably from me but for him to actually do it mm-hmm. he was like yep I'm just being I was like cool peace out we'll see you in the, you know whenever you're done I'm going downstairs uh, I love that <laughs> I love that I love that. I, both both of the stories I absolutely love um as far as him saying that he's prepared and he's ready for college that's huge Because let me tell you, a lot of these young adults think that they're ready and prepared and they can't wait to leave, but are they really, are they, you know what I mean? It sounds like he had the tools to really navigate through life versus um, someone that age that think that they're ready, but the main thing is wanting to go out, be free, party, you know, and not really live. um, There was more, I mean, there was actually more to that because he- He's a very introspective thinker also, okay. and, uh, but gregarious, like he's not an introvert at all. 
-hmm. but he is a very, he's a, a real deep thinker, but he was actually able to articulate that there had been a strategy that he saw yeah. throughout his, his, you know, parenting experience or being my kid mm -hmm. that where I just, I let him fail yes. a number of, he goes, I get it now though. He goes, I, I hated you at the time, but mm -hmm. I get it now. You needed for me to get to this moment and I, and it worked. I'm not afraid. That is right. So let's just, I guess we could wrap it up and just say being willing to do anything for our kids mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we should do everything for them. Yes. We should actually be giving them an opportunity to do more. Let's, let's go back. Go ahead. So you, so you have the framework that you are, um, you, so is that for seal or tell me about how they, how the audience can, um, purchase that framework well that's actually an interesting question because i just finished it okay and so i'm in the i'm in the the position of where i need to come to grips with my uh like the how right yes. so, uh, you'll probably start seeing it on social media and like you know give a free giveaway and things like that but the course itself um, it'll probably, it'll be on one of either mastermind or experienceify or some of those hubs where you can get, uh, if anybody's interested in the meantime, since I have the structure and I just don't have it officially loaded mm -hmm. on a platform yet, yeah. where we all can, the clearing house of curriculums, uh, obsessed about living mm -hmm. at gmail.com is my email and i'm happy to send some information and a free pdf and how to get started okay. it's really more about let's join the movement than uh than the the money like we should we should just we we need we can do better mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you so you're obsessed about living like <laughs> hello yes yeah okay. more nice. coming yeah nice now you what are some of the other um things that you do do you i noticed that you had put property management as well yeah yeah well we uh blah, blah, blah. multiple streams of income has been a it's not even i mean i, I guess i could say necessity but it's it's become more mainstream you know very few of us have one job, you know, these days, and it's fun to have multiple streams of income. It's a great way to be creative and do other things. So my husband and I, uh, we got into real estate about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so we own and manage some properties for ourselves. So we have some fun with that. But again, like doing it differently with integrity. Mm -hmm. you know yes. i'm a, i'm a great landlord my yes. properties you know they're well, very well maintained and i just like i i just want to be landlord of the year <laughs> everybody you know what and in all fairness home if you it, like <clears throat> where you lay your head at night mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be beautiful but it has to feel safe and it has to have a bit of you in it because that's mm -hmm. your castle like that's your safe place yes it is and so i always want to provide safe and affordable housing nice. for people because that's where like that's if you've got nothing else you come home at night you close the door and you're home and you're safe i love it okay so in closing janet in closing Tell me your final message to women that are watching this that may be in the valley, that may be dealing with health issues, personal issues, anything, any type of issues or obstacles that they're looking to overcome. What do you say to them? I would say that you are not your thoughts. You, and more importantly, I would encourage them to just own and step into being the star of their own movie. You know, it's, that's the beauty of it. 
you are the, and my mentor said this, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I didn't make this up. I wish I did, <clears throat> but the people in your life, they're all co-stars. Yeah. The only person that is in every scene of the movie is you. So write your story, write your script. And if you don't like the script and if you don't like the way it's going, then edit it and move on to another script and move on to another page. Just turn the page. Mm. Nothing is permanent until we take our final breath. And for, I don't even know that that's permanent. So. Thank you so much, Janet, for taking the time out to chat with me. I appreciate it. Are you it. kidding? This was fantastic. <laughs> This is like a great testimony to, to so many things. Uh, I actually have an aversion to social media. I have a love-hate relationship with us. I, I think many of us do. But you and I found each other there. So there's a wonderful positive. And for those of you that are watching, if, if you have an aversion to social media, like that you deserve, we're all sisters. Like you're not struggling alone. There's people out there that are, walking similar paths with you. So just find them and be inspired. Open yourself up to be inspired. Absolutely. You're yeah. a beautiful human. Thank this you. has been such a lovely way to start my day. Oh, thank you.